Welcome to the Unpopular Opinions. Unpopular Opinions. Have unpopular opinions. Unpopular opinions. Okay, so what's an unpopular opinion? Un popular opinions to utter such blasphemy he's got the nerve the audacity the unmitigated goal to echo such blasphemous nonsense just blasphemy how's everybody doing today this is your boy jalen hunter i want to welcome you to yet another unpopular podcast episode today we're going to be talking about some hall of famers and if they could or could not make it in today's league so stay tuned The NBA and sports as a whole is just like the internet. It's always changing and always evolving. Like you remember back in the day, AOL, LimeWire, Napster, or you remember the first, you know, MySpace. If 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 they if if we had AOL today, nobody would use it. Now, yes, AOL is the you know quote unquote godfather of a lot of the internet. And a lot of the stuff that's on the internet, so is you know, LineWire and, and and MySpace. But if they came out today, how they how the internet is today, they would not. Maybe MySpace, but they would not be as prevalent as it is. And you see that with sports. Um, the game, and and I'm just, I'm not just gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna stick all around. I'm gonna talk about all around. But the NBA changes. The NBA, if you look, even from five years ago, ten years ago, the NBA has changed. And there are certain players and there are certain styles of which people play that would not be, would not benefit the NBA today. And I say that to say, you know, if, if, say, okay, let me just say it like this. <clears throat> there are NBA Hall of Famers and NBA greats that were great back in the day but would wouldn't be as great or would, would be you know marginal players today um we hear this argument a lot in the media we hear this argument a lot you know with analysts and everything but i'm actually gonna put some names to it <laughs> i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna talk about some players that i believe could make it and some players that could not uh, spoiler alert, a lot of the players that could not play the same position uh, and a lot of the players that could kind of have the same, you know, traits and everything. But, you know, we will talk about it. We will talk about it. So let me start off with 15, 20 years ago, the three point shot was not as important as it is today. Um, with, You know, with how players like Stephen Curry and the whole Houston Rockets team and how how players and how the game has evolved and and Kevin Durant you need to know how to shoot threes to win to win you have to you have to be able to you have to be able to shoot threes or shoot at a high clip to be able to make it in this league now there are some players like i said that aren't very good at shooting threes but they can shoot at a high clip um and we talk and, and and that's like demar derozan demar derozan is not a good three-point shooter at all i think he shoots around 29 to 30 percent uh as a career and that's that's terrible that is terrible when it when you when you're talking about today's nba and when you're talking about you know a shooting guard shooting threes shooting 29 30 percent is not and i think i'm being generous with the 29 percent, but that's that's not that's not good at all and when you look at how he stacks up compared to other players in the nba that's you know you have to make ah demar derozan he's a good player he's a really good player but uh, he can't shoot threes or ah he's 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 not He's a defensive liability. See, to make it in today's NBA, like I said, you have to be able to score at a high level. You have to be able, or be able to shoot threes, catch and shoot threes, or you have to be a defensive specialist. And that's where you get players like Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly is not is a is not a good offensive player at all, but he is a defensive juggernaut. You have some hybrids like you know Anthony Davis. Oh no, boom! 
Draymond Green, he is not good offensively at all. Not saying that he can't. He's had a he's had a couple thirty point games in his career. Uh, he's 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 a he's a easy triple double, you know, accumulator. But he's not a great offensive player. But because he does so much, you know, with assist and and def, you know defending, he was a defensive player of the year. Um, he, Draymond Green has made a niche for himself in the nba and now his traits and his contribution to the nba is undeniable and that goes to what i was saying as in you have to find your niche somewhere in the nba if Draymond green was just a defender like patrick beverly is he wouldn't be known as such a great great player at that he is Patrick Beverly is a really good player and people recognize him as that but Patrick Beverly is not if he is your starting point guard uh, say you took Stephen Curry off the Golden State or and you put Patrick Beverly or say you put Kyrie Irving off of Boston and put Patrick Beverly as the one they will get considerably worse not saying that they're bad but they they would get worse and that goes and, and that goes to the DeMar DeRozan piece as i said demar Derozan, no he's not a good three-point shooter at all and he is a terrible defender but he has found his niche he has made the mid-range his game the mid-range you know kind of like what Melo did you know early in his career and how we're still trying to do now he has made his mid-range lethal and that's where i get to one player in particular Allen iverson Allen Iverson is one of those players that he was never a great, great three-point shooter. And that's because three-point shooting wasn't important or wasn't as stressed as it is today. But I believe Allen Iverson would make it in today's league just because he was... Yes, he was short, but with that handle, he has, he has one of the greatest handles in the, the league has ever seen, along with a killer shot. Allen Iverson, being about six feet, has scored 50 points a, a multitude of times. He He's won MVP. He's led a Sixers team that had a an, an old Dikembe Mitumbo. He, he led them all the way to the finals. Allen Iverson is a trendsetter Allen Iverson is is one of the top 50 greatest players ever and I think his game would translate a lot better than other other you know Hall of Famers would because he can score and Allen Iverson is a bona fide score and at his size he plays defense too I believe he he's made a couple of you know I believe I know he's made a couple of all NBA first teams even at his size, Allen Iverson was never was was always a great great defender as well as a great scorer, and that's why I think Allen Iverson would be one of those players like a Demar Derozan. I don't think he would be as good as he is or as he is revered because the league has changed, and then you have players to rival. You know his his handles and his defense and his you know trend setting. As like I said, if you. If you look at Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving to me has a better handle than Allen Iverson. Um, Steph Curry has, you know, changed the game more than Allen Iverson. Um, and of course, we've already talked about some defenders that are better than Allen Iverson. So I don't think Allen Iverson would be, would not make it in this league, but he wouldn't be as great as he is. But he would still be a bucket getter. He'd be like a, 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 a point guard version of DeMar DeRozan. No. I don't think of people don't think of DeMar DeRozan as a great great player he's a very good player and he's a top player in this league but when it's all said and done DeMar DeRozan is not to me he's not going to go down as a all-time great player he might go down as a hall of famer with all the stuff he did in Toronto and what he meant what he means to the city of Toronto but I don't I don't see him making uh you know I don't see him making a hall of fame just because of his his playing accolades you know that's that's just, no i don't see that and alan iverson if he played today while he would be a great great player he wouldn't he he wouldn't be the alan iverson that we all respect and, and don't get me wrong i'm not disrespecting alan iverson he's my favorite player ever 
he's the reason why I started watching sports. He's the reason why I started. I, I fell in love with basketball, but I got to call it spade a spade. Allen Iverson would not be as revered as he is if he played today as he is now because what he did back in the day. And that leads me to this. Let's talk about Bill Russell. Bill Russell is the greatest champion ever in any sport. Um, you know, 11 rings. He won uh, He won one as a coach. He won, I believe, 10 as a... Um, Ten as a player, he's a five-time MVP. He's made All Defense once. Uh, he's made the All NBA eleven times. Bill Russell averaged fifteen point one points a game, uh, twenty-two point five rebounds, and four point three assists. Now, those numbers, if you think, if you look at just the numbers, fifteen point one points a game, and twenty, pretty much twenty-three rebounds a game. You'd think that that is the most dominant player ever. But you also have to realize how the game was being played back then. The game, there was no three-point line one, which means Steph Curry would would be irrelevant. Um, There was no, I think there was only like eight teams. So there wouldn't even be enough for an Eastern and Western Conference. And Bill and and back in those days, the NBA wasn't a full time job. The NBA was a part time job, as in, you would play the NBA. Bill Russell was playing against mailmen. He was playing against milkmen. He was playing against, uh, you know, common folk. <laughs> uh, it wasn't until his later years when you know Wilt Chamberlain came into the league, and then the game started evolving from there. That comp- he really started, you know competition really got got high but bill russell is 610 bill russell could couldn't shoot bill russell shot 56 percent from the free throw line that was back in the day 56 percent from the free throw line now is a dwight howard or a andre drummond and remember bill russell 610 if you want to put that into perspective, LeBron James is 6'9". KD is 7 feet, pretty much, but he's listed as 6'11". Draymond Green is, I think he's like 6'5", but Bill Russell's not a Draymond Green. Bill Russell, to me, would not make it in the league today. Now, again, do not hear me saying that all these players are trash, because that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that how today, how the league is today, a person like Bill Russell, who is 6'10", and that's what I'm really putting, taking into account, who's 6'10", 215 pounds, and shot 44% from the field, and 56% from the free throw line, would not make it in today's NBA. Because he will be guarding people like KD. He'll be guarding people like Kawhi Leonard. He'll be guarding people like LeBron James. He'll be guarding people like... Carmelo Anthony, he'll be guarding people like Giannis Antetokounmpo. He'll be guarding people like, you know, lesser named Bradley Beal and stuff like that. He, he and and they would destroy this man. Don't look at look when we think of Bill Russell, we think of the name. Oh man, Bill Russell, eleven rings, greatest champion ever. But we don't. It's, it's kind of hard to overlook the fact that. The NBA only had eight teams back then. And it wasn't even a full-time job. Again, I'm not, and I'm not taking away from anything Bill Russell did. You know, he was a staunch advocate in the civil rights movement. Uh, Bill Russell was a great person and was a great player of his time. But again, like I said, just like the internet, if you dropped AOL if, the, if AOL started today, nobody would go to it because we already have, you know, we already have, you know, Gmail. We already have Yahoo. We already have um, Hotmail, which is, which is getting old, too. But it, Bill Russell would not last in today's NBA, period. And, and that's and, and that also goes for Shaquille O'Neal. 
now whoa whoa i know i know what you're saying i know what you're saying shag is one of the most dominant players ever which is true and i don't think anybody in the league would be able to stop shag offensively down in the post but but let's look at that let's look at players like andre drummond like i said let's look at players like dwight howard let's look at players like demarcus cousins when demarcus cousins came into the league and when shaq came i mean uh the white howard came into the league it was a drop the ball down to the low post let them work and let them get a bucket there you know dwight howard and and demarcus cousins are physical specimens that are you know are able to get you a bucket especially back then that took dwight howard all the way to the finals uh and draymond i mean uh demarcus cousins struggled you know because the team was was trash but demarcus cousins is a great player if you look at shaq shaq again is one of the most players in the league well the league has ever seen because of his size and because of how strong he is shaq averaged pretty much 24 points a game 11 rebounds and three assists the thing is and quiet as it cap quiet as it has kept shaq never really played defense because he was you know he he wasn't that that quick now yeah he might block a shot if it's in the paint but shaq never really played defense he was too big and too slow to play on ball defense and he would he played help defense a lot shaq couldn't shaq could not shoot to save his life uh shooting 53 percent from the free throw line that is dwight howard andre drummond uh clint capella well clint capella probably shoots better than that but shaq shaq was just physical and shaq was huge shaq was 300 and something pounds 325 pounds and 7-1 like how are you stopping that but in today's nba like as you've seen from players like roy hibbert or you see seen from players like dwight howard andre drummond um clink well not clink capella but the the league has changed if you can't shoot a three with shaq can't even shoot a free throw so if you can't shoot a three and that's where i get back to andre drummond i mean uh demarcus cousins demarcus cousins changed his game demarcus cousins added a three now he's one of the best three-point shooting big men in the league shaq could never adjust and shaq got especially towards the latter half of his career he kept getting injured and and again don't don't hear me saying Shaq is a terrible person or Shaq is a terrible player because he's not again Shaq is top probably top 10 top 15 player ever but Shaq would not make it in today's league point bank period who would think about it think about it now yes you can say who from Golden State is stopping Shaq but who is Shaq stopping from Golden State there's no way Shaq staying in front of Clay or, or uh Clay or Curry there's no way in heaven or hell he is staying in front of KD. There's no way in heaven or hell he's staying in front of Draymond Green. And there's no way now in heaven or hell that he will stay in front of DeMarcus Cousins, especially because DeMarcus Cousins can take him out to the three-point line. And DeMarcus Cousins has a dribble, has a handle a little bit. Shaq would not make it in today's league. Shaq would not be... Shaq is like, like line wire. Very important. And people would probably go to it to stream music, but what's the point when you have Apple Music? Golden State's Apple Music, Shaq is Lime Wire. Napster. You know? It's it just it it no, no. I, I couldn't see it. I could not see it. But then it brings me to one player that it would behoove me not to talk about because people are probably thinking about, you know, what do I feel about this player? Um and that's Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan never shot above 29% from three. Actually, he only did that once. I believe he did that once. Um, 29% from three. But Michael Jordan, throughout his entire career, like when he came into the league, he, was, he wasn't that good of a score, shooter. Yes, he's a scorer. He's always been a scorer. He was a scorer in North Carolina, but he was never a great shooter then he developed into a, a great mid-range shooter like probably one of the most unstoppable mid-range shooter the league has ever seen until kobe came into the league 
But then he wasn't that good of a defender. But then he developed into one of the greatest on-ball defenders the league has ever seen. But then ah, he wasn't that good of a three-point shooter. But then that one year when I believe he shot like 30, 32, 33 percent from the, from three-point line, that's the year with the shrug with the shrug game. So Michael Jordan has always adjusted. Has always adjusted his game, and that is why many consider him as the greatest player ever. I think today Jordan will adjust the way that he needs to the way that the game is. Because I I never saw Shaq adjust. Now again, I, Shaq was always big, physical, dominant. He was big, physical, dominant in Orlando. He was big, physical, dominant, uh, and you know, give me the ball down low and I will score in L.A. He was this. He was big, physical, dominant. Give me the ball and I'll score in Miami. He was big, physical, dominant. Give me the ball in Phoenix, even though his, that's when his career started going down. Same thing in Cleveland and, of course, when it ended in Boston. Shaq was never able to change his game. Same as Bill Russell, because Bill Russell never needed to. The league changed around Bill. Player, you know, NBA started getting real serious and then players started coming like Walt Chamberlain and, and Elgin Baylor. And now, and while uh, Bill Russell still beat them, Bill Russell then had competition. Bill Russell never needed to change his game until the end and when it was too late. Shaq never changed his game. And I think I think we we have we have proof that Michael Jordan changed the game. And Michael Jordan, I mean, changed his game. Michael Jordan went went from a non-shooter when he first came to the league to one of the best mid-range score one of the best pure scorers ever one of the best on-ball defenders ever and one of the best players ever so we've seen jordan change and i think jordan would change how the game you know today to fit the game no i don't i don't know if he'll be the greatest if he played today but jordan will adjust and that's the same thing as larry bird larry bird came into the leagues larry bird was one of the best shooters ever when he came into the league back in the day that would tra that would translate now same as reggie miller both of them came shooting came scoring both of those are, are some of the greatest score shooters ever some of the greatest three-point shooters ever and while it wasn't as prevalent then as it is today they pretty much issued a run or they pretty much shoe in their legacy because they went against the grain when reggie when uh larry bird played the three-pointer was new but he 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 mastered what was new we started getting other teams to start ah uh, let me let me start shooting a little more threes reggie miller went into came into the league where it was dump it down to the big man, dump it down to the big man, dump it down to the big man. You had Patrick Ewing, you had uh, you know Alonzo Mourning, you had all these big men that were great, and and you had to give it to them for them to score. But Reggie Miller was always okay. I'm shooting first. I'm shooting first. Hell, he scored what 13, 13 points in uh what nine seconds? Or was that the team back? He has something like that. So, I'm just saying, Reggie Miller and Larry Bird would fit perfectly in today's league. And Jordan, while he doesn't really fit today's mold, we've seen that he is he changes his game that when needed, and I think that's what he would do. But players like Shaq and and Bill Russell, no, I don't, I no, they you can get them up out of here. They will get in today's league. They would not make it in today's league. But then you have one player that I'm gonna I'm gonna end with this. Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson would not need to do a thing. And he would be one of the best players in the league today. Look at players like Ben Simmons. In fact, Ben Simmons and Magic Johnson would mirror each other. No, Magic Johnson was not a great scorer. No, Magic Johnson was was never a great shooter. But Magic Johnson was a 6'11 point guard. 
and and even in today's standards that 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 is unseen 611 point guard with with court vision out of this world and it yeah magic johnson is one of those rare players that he he wouldn't have to do any altering to his game and he will still be considered one of the greatest players ever magic johnson and, and if you really look at it magic johnson had a long run of just unstoppable months until of course the hiv and stuff hit but magic johnson would ha- would not have to change his game at all at all to to and he'll still be considered one of the greatest and he'll still be one of the greatest um even in today's league which is like a ben simmons ben simmons came into the league um last year of course being his first official year and he he's already considered by most top five point guards he doesn't even play a point guard because magic johnson was new nobody could really classify him. magic johnson played center when he won uh nba finals when i believe kareem was hurt ben simmons plays anywhere from the he can he plays any position with his handle with his ball ball uh with his vision with his size just like magic johnson ben simmons can play whatever position and same as magic johnson Magic Johnson would be, would still be considered one of the greatest players ever, even if he played today. So there, there you have it, man. It's, you know, short, quick, and sweet. Uh, I believe players like Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, uh, Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, they would make it in today's league. But in all, in, in different ways, of course, Larry and Reggie would would still have that cannon as an arm. Mike, I mean, Allen Iverson with his handles and his mid range shot and his defensive intensity. Um, he'll still be able to last in the league. He'll be like a smaller DeMar DeRozan. No, I don't think he'll be as great as we all revere him to be. But Allen Iverson would, st- would make it in this league. We've seen Michael Jordan adjust and evolve his career from when he first got into the league to when he ended, even with the Wizards when he was scoring 48 points at age 40 you know he 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 would still he he's adjusted so i believe michael jordan would would do as such he would adjust to the game that's what he would adjust um and of course i don't believe i don't believe magic johnson would have to do anything to adjust his game because even in today's league being a 6 10 6 11 point guard that that's or 6 7 i'm sorry 6 7 point guard that is that is un, un unheard of even in today's league but then there's players like Shaq and bill russell and carl malone and elvin hayes and bob pettit and you know john havlicek who yes they were great in their time but i can't see them adjusting to today's game i can't see bob pettit uh who was a small forward and a point guard at the time um stopping kd or curry i couldn't see john havlicek holding down demar derozan or victor oladipo at that so those you know those are some players that i believe would not make it in today's league now of course if you disagree um of course you can leave in the comments i'm always free to discuss i'm always free to talk about it i want to thank you for listening to this edition of the unpopular podcast um stay tuned for our next episode uh i want to thank you again for listening and um peace in the middle east much love even better than i was the yeah. last time baby ooh, 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 ooh. we back um, I was the last time, baby. We back and 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 we back. Better than I was the last time. Raps just made me anxious and that shit made me crazy. Them squares just made me looser, that wax just made me lazy. And I still make this song and I'ma make another. If you ever actually hit me, better watch out for my brother. Better bet I'll take that deal. Gotta watch out for my mother. Get a watch with
with all that glitters, come in clutters, different colors Been a baller, been for butler, chauffeur, hit a stainer Did I stutter, did a ton of drugs and did better than all my alma mater Motherfucking money dance, honey's in, Galilee Make a joke, bowling those hair, then piggyback